Okay, time to add some extra functionality. So again, if we open up our canvas or panel, as it's called in Touch Designer, um, we can draw. But now we're actually limited to our canvas. canvas. Uh, and what I would like to do is like right click in order to drag everything that I've drawn so far um out of the screen so that i have like an infinite canvas because now everything is actually uh, maybe i can show you like here you see that everything is actually yeah um drawn um around the origin but what i would like to do is by right clicking and dragging that i offset everything to one side so if i want to drag everything to the left i would right click drag it to the left and everything gets actually offset it to the the minus uh, x x direction so therefore i've tried it in one way which i'll I'll, I'll just show you because it can be very handy but in this case it doesn't work but let's see if I open parent parameters you can go into panel and you can go to um, relative UV if you alt, hold alt and hover over one of these things it will actually show you most of the time all the information you need so you don't need to go to the help pages for just the general or the python help but uh, let's read what relative uv means so when enabled the uv panel values will reflect relative mouse movement okay this time it's not that useful but anyway if we select it we can tell with the buttons above which button i want to use for the relative uv so now i chose for the right button so r select uh, will generate relative uv channels so let's for now add a separate panel also for the parent which you can see here but let's only select u and v and now if i just close this down open this one up again now you can see that okay while inside u and v are moving um, even when i draw stuff um, these uv relative uvs are not changing that's because they are controlled via the right uh, r select so the right uh, mouse button so if i now right click and move you can see that i can like when i release it it will remember the last state where i lift my mouse if i and so i can like yeah i can give it more and more and more and more offset or i can drag it back to zero and it remembers the state where i left it off so that's a nice very nice feature the only thing here is that we need um, to keep a separate offset for each of the lines because let's remove all the lines again if we draw a line and now i want to drag it to the side then it will end up or it should end up like somewhere left way way more left of the the origin and then i draw another line again near the origin but now the previous line should have an offset already and the new line should not have an offset but if i now drag both lines to the left the offset for the first line should be incremented even more while the second line doesn't have any offset yet and it should have a fresh start starting from the place around the origin where it was placed in the first place and only then it should be offset anyway this relative uv is actually shared for all of those um, copies therefore it's not very usable and anyway, we have also tried like making these uh, containers themselves instead of uh, just bases so each of those containers 
can have a separate panel chop inside of them but then you have the problem of um, the, the parent panel holding the, the click values and not letting them through to the parent or the child uh, containers so I've tried a few things if someone someone has an idea on how to do this better please let me know because it's but yeah it's still interesting how I fixed it so let's remove this one let's go back up let's deactivate these two or reset it just to the defaults okay so let's do it my way again remove everything create some lines uh, close it down and next um, what do we want we go into the master and now if you go to the help page of the slope chop um, you will see that um, I've highlighted a few things for this slope chop. It says that it can be used in con conjunction with the speed chop. Um, the slope chop allows you to calculate speed um, and this speed um, you can use again as input for the speed chop so we can get position data. So that's something we need. So therefore I'll start off with a slope. I'll also add a speed like the documentation says. And now if I connect it and if I connect my UVs and I open up the viewer for the for obtaining the canvas, I can see that like the slope when I move the slope is actually if I move fast the slope goes higher in value than when I go slow it just shows me actually the speed I'm moving with um, and this speed is output at the, the back end of the slope and it's fed into the speed and the speed is like you should you could think of it like a little car where you say okay now this is the speed you need to go and it will hit the the pedal and it will move forward so let's start at zero my mouse is the car uh, when i move it the slope will register the speed i'm moving with and this speed is fed in to the speed chop uh, pressing pedal of a car let's say um, and this gives me actually the distance i traveled from um, the origin so if i move back also the distance is decreased again if i go to left yeah so this is just one way to implement relative uv but i don't want to constantly be doing this with those two chops so i only want to do this uh, when right selecting so let's take care of this again is select let's go look one level up so one level up panel one uh, which channel do i want i want r select okay and this allows me to also use a cross chop so i can also add a constant chop with the same channel names inside u inside v they are kept at zero um so i can say okay this constant zero goes in the cross and next goes in the uh, actual slope um, data and only when i'm right selecting i would like to uh, -bum, let's take care of this one so only when i'm right selecting i'll put the cross to the second input or to the right so here you can see that if i right click the r select becomes active cross 
uh, chooses for the slope input and not the constant anymore. Therefore, um, if I like move here, it will now 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 it will pick the slope, which delivers a speed value, um, and it will pass it to the speed actually. So now you can see that when I release or when I'm not R selecting, right selecting, um, the slope is actually not being fed into the speed. Therefore, the speed remembers its, its last position as it's not being, yeah, the pedal of the little car is not being pushed. Uh, but only when I, when I right select, I actually uh, pass the speed information from the slope through the cross to the speed. Uh, meaning I can do exactly the same as the UV or the relative UV and I can store an offset for each line and this offset I will now need to use um, to probably fed into a math chop so let's already place it in and here we can just say, okay, this is the actual line data from the trail uh, chop. But now I have offset details for you. You need to take into account. So also feed it into the math chop and also say combine chops, um, probably add. And now let's add another null let's use this one um, bum, bum, bum. all my lines are disappearing so let's have a look what's going on so i made the change in the master yes that's good uh, let's remove all the lines and now let's see why nothing is happening okay 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 so um the lines are being registered okay 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 i see what's going on so we have some more longer channels but nothing is coming through however to fix this we can say normally align stretch to shift to first interval yes okay so there you have it normally when I keep drawing, ah, okay, I did it in a copy, so I should be doing it in the master, of course. Let's go in the master, align, shift to first interval, and here you are. Now I can drag them with right clicking, I can add lines. These two new lines, they don't have any offsets, so I can show you. Uh, let's go into the last two lines. They are horizontal. So here, no offset. So they are actually still positioned around the origin. But if I go out and go to uh, some previous lines, which already, which I gave some offset, you can actually see, okay, they have some offset and they're offset from the origin position where they were created so they are offset and we can also show in another way still that's the cool thing about touch designer i think you see what you get or whatever yeah you, you can whatever you do in touch designer it, it, it enables you to see what you do it gives you visual feedback and you can better understand what you're doing you if you can try out stuff and without even knowing what you're doing but by looking at it you can yeah, you, you start to understand what's going on and this is for me at least a very intuitive way of, of building like small applications or stuff. Anyway, um, let's show what I was meaning to show. So now I can drag everything out or away from this origin. So if I activate this one, um, I can move it way out but if i zoom out and i draw something new it will be positioned around the origin there you go so here is the origin and all the rest has its offset but i can 
now give the newly line newly added line some offset and now it starts moving away from the origin and i can start decreasing the previous lines or the offset start decreasing the offset for the previous lines so that they become uh, more near to the origin again so that's how you actually create an infinite drawing canvas you can move everything out of the way you can draw something new move it out of the way draw something new draw, move it out of the way and everything is just offset from the origin but everything you draw will be born or created at the origin and then you can just move everything away so that's my way of implementing the relative uv my way of implementing this infinite drawing canvas so in the next part i'll be using the middle mouse button to obtain the relative uv which i'll first clamp between zero and one and next do a range mapping uh, from zero to a hundred We'll also be using an S-curve to make the zooming a bit more accurate or precise when all the way zoomed in. And by giving it the same 0 to 100 range as the relative UV, we can hook up both of them to a lookup chop. So when zooming in between a 0 and 100, the lookup chop will look up the corresponding S-curve values and obtain the zoom value. So let's say that we start drawing a line, then we have its UV coordinates, which will be recorded in a trail chop. But after the trail chop, we'll now be adding a math chop that takes in the zoom value and does the scaling, after which it's sent to the rendering. However, if we now start drawing a new line while the zoom is 2, for example, the line will get recorded in the trail chop while holding our mouse button. But it will also already be scaled up by a factor of 2 automatically, causing it to be rendered out too big. So in order to counteract this, we add in a math chop before the trail chop where the line gets recorded. And by making the math multiply the UV by the inverse of the zoom factor, the scaling in the second math gets cancelled out, resulting in a correctly sized line while you are still drawing the line itself. But when you finish drawing the line and you lift up the mouse button, meaning the L select becomes zero, the recording for this line will stop. So from now, only the second math will still have an influence on the zooming. Mm -hmm.